Good luck. Hello everyone. I am Tracy Heider Suffern, Executive Director here at the National Jazz Museum in Harlem. On behalf of all of us, our Board of Trustees, our staff, and our Artistic Directors, Christian McBride and John Batiste, I welcome you to our event today. Every year here at the museum, we present over 100 concerts, lectures, discussions, and family programs, all free, all open to the public. In addition to our public events, we host over 200 school groups with in-person and virtual educational workshops and concerts. We are committed to presenting jazz in unexpected places and to making the Jazz in Harlem experience accessible to every person on the planet. We provide emerging and established artists with opportunities to share their work, and we explore the evolving story of jazz through our program theme, The Roots and Roots of Jazz. Today, we are thrilled to present the world premieres of M3's third cohort, the Summer Solstice 2021 cohort. Mutual Mentorship for Musicians, or M3, is a platform created to empower, elevate, normalize, and give visibility to women, to non-binary musicians, and to those of other historically underrepresented gender identities an intersection with race, sexuality, or ability across generations in the US and worldwide through a radical model of mentorship and musical collaborative commissions. Now, I'm happy to introduce M3 co-founders, Jen Xu and Sara Serpa. Hello, we're so excited to have you with us today for this first day of world premieres from this truly exceptional cohort of musicians. Before we begin, we want to thank Doris Duke Charitable Foundation, New Music USA, and Arlene and Larry Dunn for co-commissioning this cohort's new works. And also huge thanks to Nancy and Joe Walker and Media The Foundation. A reminder that if you love what you've seen here today, please do consider supporting our next cohort with a tax deductible donation and help us keep this new paradigm of mutual mentorship going. Yes, we're excited to introduce our host for our festival, Kyla Marshall. Kyla Marshall is a writer whose poems, essays, interviews, and reviews have appeared in The Guardian, Kinfolk, O Magazine, Ebony, the Ringer and the Believer, among others. In her work as an arts and culture writer, she has covered a wide range of musical subjects, including the Afropunk Festival and Kendrick Lamar's Pulitzer Win, and interviewed such artists as Esperanza Spalding, Van Hunt, Gretchen Parlato, Kelly's Kayon Harold, and Dev Hines. 
Originally from Boston, she grew up in Silver Spring, Moorhead, and Portland, and now lives in Brooklyn. Let's welcome Kyla Marshall. Hi, everyone. Welcome to day one of the M3 Festival. We're so excited to have you here. We've got some amazing artists sharing their music from all over the world. Without further ado, here we go. We'll begin with Leal Shakar and Milena Casado with their work First Movement, Natur Mort, and Second Movement, Preguntas. Preguntas cuya respuesta desconozco. Sentimientos que me envuelven. A veces me confunden. Alegría, mi abuela. 
quien me mostró el camino para encontrar la armonía que llevamos dentro. Thank you all for sharing that wonderful piece, uh, Natur Mort, first movement and Pregunta, second movement. Um, could you start just by telling me what the, what the inspiration was and, and what the process was for working on this piece? Um, so we, um, we, were, of course, we were conversing back and forth and trying to think of how um, we could actually you know, make this piece work at a distance and at the same time um i think we were both uh, having a, a hectic time in our lives uh, so trying to tackle many things at the same time and um and so we decided that we would give each other two different points of departure so um milena sent me um a thought a musical thought and i sent her a musical thought um, and then we worked on each other's we on um, you know uh, objects that we sent, and um, we initially I think we wanted them to merge into one piece, um, but we kind of ended up really appreciating that format of two movements, with two different sources, and how we both um, communicated with that source and made it a two-way conversation. Um, and I think the, um, at least for me, like at Nature Mart, uh, when I was speaking to uh, Milena, um, I was feeling that um, every time I was trying to respond to the piece she sent me, uh, or even like send her an object, I was always trying to find a moment of stillness and calm um, amid a, a day that would be, you know, very, either very busy or very hectic or very loud. And every time I wanted to respond to her or send her something, I would be always trying to find a moment of quiet and, and stillness and, and, and calm. And so I found myself always looking for that same place every time I wanted to work on that piece. So that's why I, I kept gravitating towards that, that idea of stillness. And that's why the first movement is called Nature Mart Still Life. Yeah, that, that's beautiful. And I would say it, it was pretty similar for me too. Like the, the process of creating these two pieces was uh, really beautiful and also like 
gave me kind of like escape from everything that was uh, happening around me. It was like a really like busy time for both of us. So that was a, a way to actually escape that and just, you know, create something. And one thing I really love, it was the idea of both sending each other an idea and we didn't give each other any specific topic or, you know, specific like um, theme that we wanted to create but we found each other and kind of created something um, really similar. And yeah, I really liked the process. It was really beautiful, no judgment, just, you know, letting ourselves uh, be free. Yeah, and the process of it of, um, basically we just kept sending back and forth the same um, track and it just kept getting, having more and more layers. And um, with very little instructions, just really um, with our ears as guide and our in our conversations um, prior to this, so it was really it was really uh, special. Yeah. So, um, in in terms of that process of kind of exchanging back and forth, what what did you learn about the other person's style and interests and and process through creating the piece? Um, I just, I, I personally think that um, the way we've worked um, is um, in the best of circumstances, considering, you know, what we have at hand, which is a work um, in distance. And uh, we, so we made the best out of it. But I think that I, um, it was for me an introduction to working with Milena. And I think um, it gave me um, more, um, more ideas about um, how she thinks musically to, to create something after having had conversations with her when, where I just basically listened to the finished product. So I listened and I saw what she writes and how she, and, and what she is inspired by. And seeing her process made me uh, understand how she thinks to create. And I think it in all in all this, I think it's an introduction exercise and I think the real work or you know it, it can now begin maybe in person now that we know each other's musical worlds let's say right yeah totally um i mean it was like really great just to get to know each other like we haven't met physically or you know in the same room playing together so it was a, a really like great experience just to get to know uh, the different process and also the different worlds in a way you know where we come from how we create where we think about and I feel it was a really great merge just of both both of us is creating together and finding ways to to connect with each other yeah um those individual movements Lyal yours is called uh nature mort which means still life what what else what were some of the other themes that you were kind of uh, working with in that in that piece? And then you want to talk about the second movement, preguntas? Yeah, uh, sure. Yeah, yeah. So I guess for uh, for the movement preguntas, I was thinking about just the fact of like when you ask yourself questions, when you want to find yourself, and you you gotta ask yourself a lot of questions. So. I guess I was gravitating towards this idea, and but I didn't tell Ayao until the end, until I added the poem. So it was like really beautiful how like she like added um, all those different layers to it, and we actually found something really beautiful through it without actually knowing the idea. So I really love that because I feel like both of us uh, like have a really common idea of what we want to say through music or what we want to express through it. So yeah, that was really amazing. Yeah, I think uh, it was, it was, I mean, the second movement in a way, the way it works is that we go gradually from something that is just our instruments, the first movement, and then, um, you know, more and more we gravitate towards something different and and the second movement, I, you know, I start using different things, electronics and, and my voice, and then there's Milena's text. And so it's just, it just keeps growing into something different and we add more, 
uh, tools, and uh, whether it's text or voice or you know mm -hmm. different ways of reading or electronics. And so I think it's a natural, um, I would say, like augmentation, taking up even more space uh, as we as it unfolds. Mm. Yeah, um, Milena, what were some of those questions you were asking yourself? Do you mind sharing? Yeah, for sure. So. I guess it wasn't like a specific question, in, like in particular, but just like the fact of like telling myself, like, you know, you gotta ask yourself questions. Like, is this really you? Like, how are you feeling? Uh, is this a reflect of who you want to be? But are you, you know, are you that person that you think you are or you're not? You know, just the fact of like questioning myself and, you know, what I am, who I am, what I want to do you know, all the fears and insecurities that go through that process, but all, also all the hope or courage that you can feel through it. So yeah, it was just kind of like the fact of like finding yourself in the unknown in a way. And mm -hmm. I guess I, I haven't found myself yet, but it, it's a good thing to actually question about it and just trying to, to follow that journey. Yeah, it's, it's an ongoing process. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you both so much for sharing your piece. It was wonderful. All right, let's keep it going. Next, we have Diane Monroe and Rebecca Heller and the premiere of their co-composition, Hope is the Thing with Feathers. <laughs>
That was wonderful. Now I have with me Diane Monroe and Rebecca Heller who composed the piece, Hope is the Thing with Feathers. Mm -hmm. Hi, hi to both of you. Hi there, hi Kyla. Oh, nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Um, so watching this video, it was, there were so many different uh, 
creative elements going on uh, in addition to the musical component. There's the sculpture by Simone Lee. Um, there's, it's named after an Emily Dickinson poem. There's dance, there's calligraphy. And I was wondering why you all uh, chose to incorporate all of those different elements into the video portion of your piece. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> well, <laughs> well. Really, uh, the uh, the thread that runs through both of us is uh, is improvisation, and uh, uh, we. I think really this is this was the essence of improv for us in terms of building uh, our story, because um, you know really we we started from exchanging uh audio files to each other you know back and forth with each other and uh and enjoying hearing each other, one another and then and then layering uh so so that we would compile for for a duo so i would i would uh, you know, play back to her what she said to me, you know, and she would play back to <laughs> to, to me what, <laughs> what I said to her, you know, and, and so and then so so that, of course, the sound happened first, you know, and then, you know, um, we, we just, it, it just came to us, it, it, everything just came, right, Rebecca? I mean, it was just, yeah, I think when we were thinking about the visual elements, um, neither of us have a visual practice the way that we have a sonic practice, but we have a lot of people in our lives who do really interesting and creative things. And Diane knows these dancers who create this whole world in and of itself, um, that's really evocative. And the calligraphy that you see is actually my brother, who is a stone carver and a painter and a, and a calligrapher. And um, I thought was like, well, what is it if we share what we have so far and allow these other really creative artists to tap into that, to respond to that? Um, and what would that look like to sort of have a more conversation happening visually than something else that we could sort of produce as separate? Yes. <laughs> right. Um... Well, uh, I know that you each have a classical music background in part, and I was wondering- Oberlin if... alumni. <laughs> Yay, Oberlin <laughs> alum, woo! <laughs> um, awesome. I, I was wondering if through this piece, if you were, um, if there was anything that you were trying to move towards or move away from. I, I guess I think sometimes classical musicians have that, feeling where they want to branch out. Um, and so I was wondering if this piece was maybe a, a, a branching out from that or, or maybe it wasn't moving toward it in, in some ways. <laughs> I think it, yeah, I think, I think it was, for us, it was really exciting and also kind of comfortable to know that at the core, we have this same deep language where we started in the classical world and, and moved on and, so I think for us, it's cool that we are so comfortable in, in improvisation that we can still draw from elements of that language with one another. So for me, and I wasn't so much of a, of a turning away or branching out, but it was allowing elements of that to seep into what we were doing together instead of being like, that's not what I do anymore right. or all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I thought also the same. Um, I the 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 element was for me was was to be open to just to remain open about uh, about whatever would come out you know I'm I'm also a jazz musician and I uh you know in and maybe some things were you know were would be perceived as so-called jazz maybe some would would be perceived as so-called classical music but it wasn't I you know I tried to to have an open field for that, you know? Um, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, another thing, I was wondering about the title of the piece because the music itself sounds a bit haunting to me, <laughs> but the title is, is hopeful, it's got hope in it. So I was wondering if, you know, what's going on there? Is it like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, we, Rebecca and I just decided that we, we were both, both kind of haunting, <laughs> you know, in our in our in, in 
eternal yep, lives. Yep. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. And 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 so uh, you know, we weren't really messing with it. You know, we were just watching it grow. And uh, and, it, and it, it it turned out that we loved this poem, especially Rebecca. She really uh, resonated with this poem that that I had found. Um, and it, it was just and it, she, you know, it, it turned out that she had read read the, the whole em, Emily Dickinson anthology and 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 all and uh, and experienced it, you know, in her life. Uh, so we would just we went with it and of course you know the sign of the times when you know just just how it has been now you know um uh, so 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 hope was you know was was really is was really top on the list it was the it was the the the, the big title you know the mm -hmm. the super title kind of thing yeah and part of our process early on was finding things that inspired us either written word or visual elements or dance and sharing them with one another. So before we would meet, we'd, we'd share these, these snippets of things in the world that really inspired us. And this was, this poem was something that Diane brought and it struck me because it, it was really present in a super hard point in my life. And we were both like, whoa. And that informed kind of both the deepest but also like prettiest part, like it's the very end of the piece where I'm humming and Diane is playing this really beautiful, soft high harmonics. That is when we were really sort of embodying that poem or, or let, allowing us to inspire us in this moment, allowing it to inspire us in the moment. Yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, to that point, uh, what are some things that you're each hopeful about? <laughs> Well, <laughs> wait, can you ask that again? And we'll get rid of the long pause. And we'll get it. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> no. I know we were both like, oh, God. No, 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 no. Well, I was going to say, it can be something small, you know. No, then... I think I have an answer now. Okay. <laughs> no, it's just that, you know, um, you know a, a, along with what's with what all is happening and what we are all being aware of you know being made aware of uh constantly um you know there's just a little you know i i have uh i guess it's just general hope you know i mean um i can't not you know uh because you know internally you know we, the, the, the things are are bubbling and 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 growing inside of me so i want to express that so that's that's hope you know i mean that's that's really close to uh what you know and and if i stay to that if i really stay focused on that 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 really you know i i can have i can remain hopeful you know if i'm all over the place and just you know worrying about what's happening and forget it you know but if i can see things if i can just you know uh, observe observe and just just be the the watcher you know and just know that i can return to my source and just really be creative that's hope and that's that that's really what changes the world anyway you know that's what changes things in my opinion you know yeah, I agree. I think art making, especially collaborative art making, is essentially hopeful. It's an act of hope, and, and it's also a rebellious act. Of hope. I think, especially now, when it's so easy to be like everything is really dark, and there's so much going on in the world that's really dark. I think being able to be present in your art and with with one another is is a really powerful act. <laughs> that's for sure. Yep. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank you both so much for sharing your work with us. Oh, well, you're thank quite you welcome. So much. Thank you for, for all. <laughs> and thank you, Diane. It's nice to see you. Oh, thank you, I Rebecca. You. It's great to see you too. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Pleasure. And now we've got Ria Modak and Barbara Togander premiering their work, People of Many Lands. Esperando que un mundo sea desenterrado por el lenguaje, alguien canta el lugar en que se forma el silencio. Luego comprobará que no 
porque se muestre furioso existe el mar. Ni tampoco el mundo. Cada palabra dice lo que dice y además más y otra cosa. saben caminar, cansada de la insidiosa fuga de preguntas, cansada de dormir y de no poder mirarme, cansada de abrir la boca y beber el viento, cansada de sostener las mismas vísceras, cansada del mar, indiferente a mis angustias, cansada de Dios, cansada de Dios. Amor. Yes, so. 
world, body, soul, life, Hallisera, thought, kofta, matro, skär, silencio, silence. People of many lands. Malin and Valupi, people of many lands. Malin and Valupi, people of many lands have rest. Malin and Valupi, people of many lands have rest. Malin and many lands. Malin. The little language. Many lands. Now we have Ria Modak and Barbara Togander talking about their wonderful piece, People of Many Lands. Thank you both so much for being here and for the wonderful piece you composed together. Um, I just wanted to start by asking how did, what was the process of collaborating? I know you all are based in different countries also. So what was that like? Ria, please. Sure. Um... At first, we met on Zoom and talked about a lot of things, a lot of them not even related to the commission necessarily, just our musical trajectories and our lives, and started sending each other snippets of music over WhatsApp, um, really low quality like phone audio recordings and sending them back and forth. And very organically and naturally, um, something beautiful just emerged uh, from the clips we've been sending back and forth to each other. Um, and so in terms of your individual styles, from what I heard, it's, it, I don't know where one artist begins and the other ends. So how did you blend those styles together? Was it like a natural symbiosis that was already there? Or did you kind of take on some of the other's uh, musical tendencies? Well, you can start, Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, well, there are many questions there to answer, I think. Um, we are, we come from different, uh, I don't know if we come from different, we, 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 our tra musical trajectory is different. I uh, do uh, free music or experimental music, uh, free improvisation. Um, Ria comes more from the academic uh, school uh, and uh, 
uh, she has a lot of interest in a lot of uh, different kind of music as well and uh, I think that um, even though we uh, we uh, do different kind of music from uh, different backgrounds uh, our interest is very vast and very rich and I think that has to um, it's related to how we both then found this thing in common and that is that we have um, cultural mixtures both of us uh, Ria is uh, from New York she lives in New York uh, but she has this very strong uh, relationship with India and Indian culture because of her family and her family background and uh, I live in Argentina. Um, I've been living here for 40 years, so I've got a lot of that uh, in my everyday living. Uh, but at the same time, I'm from Sweden, so uh, and that is also very present. So suddenly we realized that we got this feeling of being immigrants all the time or transitioning from one place to another. And at the same time, like uh, I'm from here, but then I've got this. So this kind of movement, both of us. And that is uh, very special uh, because it's very unique. So it was like, okay, this is our place together. This is what we share. At, at the same time, then we started working um, as a puzzle. Ria sent me uh, some beautiful things. <laughs> Uh, the guitar and beautiful melody with this beautiful voice she has and I was like whoa how am I going to do <laughs> what am I going to do with this beautiful thing uh, and uh, so I, uh, we had talked a lot about how we are very interested in poetry and in, in the spoken uh, world word and um, so I started recording a poetries of this uh, Argentine poet that is Alejandra Pizarnik um, and uh, working then also with the turntable and then the fragmentation of the voice and then I sent her this and she would listen to it and come up with we would listen to it together she would make a feedback give ideas we would share and then make up another piece and you know so it was like it it has been constructed uh, this composition composition and at the same time it was sounding like uh, okay so first this and what does this leads us up to and then what do you hear after this and you know uh, so it has been a, a puzzle uh, built in time and it has been a beautiful experience actually yeah I think puzzle is such such a great word to use I feel like um at the very outset, I was so open to breaking out of the classical conservatory perfectionist mindset that has been so instilled in me from years of years of learning. Um, and I was so just open to being under Barbara's influence of all of this freedom and ferocity and passion that are things that I deeply felt resonating my body when I listened to Barbara's music. Um, and so I think in some senses, we, we came from maybe opposite ends of the spectrum. Um, but I think through this, you know, puzzle of a collaboration found, found something in between. Yeah, I like that word too, puzzle. I think that's a good way of thinking about a kind of multi-country uh, collaboration when you're working remotely with people. Um, Barbara, you mentioned the poetry in the in the piece, and that's also in the video. Um, there's so much language throughout this piece, and I was wondering how you each feel, um, how you all relate to to language from a musical standpoint, uh, and why you chose those poems in particular. Well. Uh... That's, that's not an easy question to answer. <laughs> I don't know why I chose those poems. Um, there were a lot of other poems too. Uh, actually, there were more poems, uh, Sufi poems that uh, uh, we also came up with. And finally, it ended up um, 
uh, like it did. Uh, there's something of this. These poems are quite dark, actually. Um, they're very deep and very dark, and uh, and I think that's a little bit of a color of the language of the of the of the meanings of the words. Something that we both like with Ria, like well, you know, it might be a little bit dark. Yeah, dark. I like it. You know, like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, um, and they're very very beautiful. And uh, there is this uh, first poem that talks about um, the sound someone is singing the language right and then the silence like the language as the sound the silence and the music and there's something about this um, the word as a musical event how do words work as sound at the same time as they mean something and the building of these phrases um, so uh, I think that both Ria and I have this relationship, dual relationship with languages, right? Uh, and the sound of it and how they, uh, they move um, in a different way. How does Spanish sound, how does English sound, how does Hindu sound and Swedish, it's absolutely different. That makes a soundscape mm -hmm. of words where the, the meaning starts to vanished a little bit but it's still there and there is this musical musicality in the words and so there is also this playing with fragmentation like they're talking like what did she say i don't know something was sounding there so how words and music can get together and meaning and no meaning and something very abstract and sound music and very concrete as meaning is there playing together and um, I think that in our work with the video it was like the same idea of this puzzle like a, lots of images with a different uh, right black and white colors different textures forms uh, um, ideas aren't we all that and at the end of it like we're a mm -hmm. lot of things at the same time I think yeah yeah I think um, one thing that reminds me of is how the sung part of the piece has no words to it. Um, it's just vocalizing, um, vocalizing a melody without words. And so the relationship between words and music and language and sound is all a little bit counterintuitive to what we normally expect to hear in a song that has words in it. Um, like the words are forming their own music that's almost a separate way of creation uh, than the melody that you hear in the beginning. Um, but the melody itself, of course, was like very much in conversation with the darkness, as you put it, Barbara, and the kind of hauntingness of, of the poem. Um, yeah. 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 I'm sorry, Kyla. Uh, no, no, go ahead. <laughs> keep talking. But oh, no, I ahead. mean, how how this this uh, opposites all the time gets together? Ria and I come from different we're different ways of of yeah relating with music or backgrounds and and uh, different places, um, different languages, the melody, the words, like all the time these edges or these. Uh, different sides that come together finally in a piece and it marries so well and so beautifully uh and that is that is magic that's i don't know yeah. um well i was wondering if you all could share what you um what you learned from each other coming from different places different generations different practices what did you all learn from the other artists? Oh, there's so much. Where, where to begin? Mm -hmm. um, I think there are some like very concrete things, like Barbara introduced me to a world of poetry that I had never encountered before, and a world of music that I didn't really listen to. Um, and so that was really cool to engage with. And then I think on the kind of more metaphysical level, I suppose, or a more genuine level. Um, I think Barbara really helped me break out of 
a shell that that I feel like I was in. I don't consider myself to be a singer most of the time. Um, and so when I sent one of the first recordings I sent to Barbara was me playing playing the guitar and singing a melody. And Barbara was like, okay, so you're singing in this in this piece. <laughs> and I was like, really? Me? But you're the singer. Um, and so breaking out of the kind of labels that I set for myself as uh, as just a guitarist or just an instrumentalist, um, I think was really beautiful. Um, I also think I learned to take myself way less seriously as an artist, which is so important. Um, there were so many like goofy and silly moments in our collaboration and so much humor and laughter, which uh, was just such a joy to be to be in. Um, yeah, I mean, I could go on all day, <laughs> but I'll stop there for now. Barbara, what about you? What did you learn from Ria? Oh my God. Oh yeah, me too. I mean, I enjoyed it so much and it was not at all what I thought it was going to be. Like, you know, I, I had this idea, like, you know, I'm an improviser, so, you know, what could go wrong? I mean, everything's just perfect. And, and, and it was absolutely not at all what I thought. Um, and everything went right, nothing went wrong, but what, it was was not how I imagined, and that is so great. Um, that is fantastic that you have surprise, right? You're surprised by okay, uh, oh, uh, we have to do it this way in a different way. Like um, you, we're not improvising together, but we are building a composition in a different way than I thought we were going to do, and it was a challenge. And it was beautiful, I, and I enjoyed it very much. I, I enjoy challenges and new things. Um, it's been a great pleasure working with Ria, really. Uh, it's been fantastic. She's so passionate and so talented. And oh my God, her voice. Oh my God, her voice. Uh, the first piece she sent to me, I couldn't stop listening to it. Like it was like, you know, I was I got addicted to it. <laughs> and I, I just couldn't stop listening to it all the time. The beauty of it. Um, and, en and I enjoyed it so very much. Uh, and enjoyed very much the mixing of this. Just thank you for that. Uh, I I'm so thankful for the material uh, uh, you just brought up. And you were improvising because you were improvising that material. It was something that was going on there, but you were improvising. Um, it was beautiful, and uh, I, I, this Sufi Ria came with these Sufi poems that I hope someday we can use in a, in a, a, a another project we could do together someday, because they are so fantastic. These amazing voices uh, saying this Sufi beautiful poems in Hindi. It yes, it's absolutely amazing. And I want so much to work with that in the future. Absolutely. It's been amazing. It's been beautiful uh, working with her. Uh, absolutely. It's been a pleasure. Also the fact of, okay, we're musicians. Let's do a video, you know. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah, how is this? And so, um, so that's a place where we both were absolutely brand new in, I think, right? Uh, and it was so much fun uh, discovering a beautiful person, talented person, working in a different way that I usually usually do when making this beautiful piece that I like very much. It's been amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I could go on and on too, so <laughs> absolutely. This has been such an incredible day of music. We're going to invite all of these wonderful artists back on screen so you, the audience, can send in your questions and comments for them. I'd like to turn it over to M3's co-founders, Jen Shu and Sada Serpa. Yay! We can all clap now. <laughs> so, um... As our wonderful tech, uh, Abel, is uh, getting our screens up all together, um, I just wanted to encourage you all again to leave any questions. I see three beautiful questions 
here in the Q&A function. Hi, everyone. <laughs> um, yes, bravi, bravi. Um, it was so beautiful. And uh, I just, yeah, I want to, first of all, um, Sara Serpa says hello. She's from the plane um, watching. <laughs> Um, her flight from Florida was delayed, so, um, but she's watching all of us now on YouTube <laughs> from the plane. Um, and I, the first question is um, from Christopher Pelham, who is one of our big supporters um, of uh, Center for Remembering and Sharing. So shout out to Chris. Um, he asks, and I'm going to pose this question to all duos, um, were there any points of resistance or moments where you found yourself working outside of your familiar way of composing. So we'll start with um, Milena and Lyle's duo. So Milena, if you wanna answer first. Hi everybody. Thank you so much Yay. for all your work. Wow, that was amazing. <laughs> no words. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so beautiful. Um, yeah, thank you everybody for the questions as well. Uh, I feel that definitely there were some moments of resistance, but I, uh, in my, my opinion, like I feel like Yali myself, we kind of embrace them. You know, we try to, to get everything we could from them, from that like, maybe like sometimes frustration of like, wow, like how should we do this? Or how can I record this? But it was it was really amazing just trying to to work in every possible way we could and embrace those moments of resistance. Yeah, we're, I'm curious. Were there any uh, since Lyal, as I just wrote in the chat, she's in Grenoble right now performing. Um, but were there any times you maybe had some disagreements or you know kind of had a, a debate? amongst the both of you or can you remember any not at all not at all <laughs> like you wow. know it, it was it was amazing because um like we we created like these two movements so basically we both started uh, one of the ideas you know so uh, in my case i started my idea and i just sent it to her and she did whatever she wanted and vice versa she just sent it to me and I recorded whatever I felt over it. Like, for example, for her uh, I, first idea, I, I was like, you know, I'm kind of feeling like piano on these. And I don't play, I mean, I don't really play piano. Like, <laughs> but I was like, I don't know, I'm just feeling piano. So I just record the piano. Or, you know, I'm mm -hmm. feeling like some voices, some effects. So, you know, no judgment. You know, we gave each other freedom to to add whatever we were feeling. And that was amazing, really beautiful. Amazing. Yeah, great. And well, would Rebecca and Diane like to kind of address that question about um, any points of resistance or moments where you found yourselves working outside of your familiar way of composing, creating? Yeah, that's a great question. I, I think that's always, um, you know, it's hard to meet someone without meeting them, you know, in person. And for me, it was a really new situation to create something from scratch in remotely and to not only develop a musical language together, but develop a personal relationship with one another and uh, understand our different communication styles, our different styles um, of working, our different ways of going about it. And so I don't, remember any times of like clashing in terms of disagreement. I think it was more just sort of understanding how we were going to work together, how we were going to start um, and what that process was going to look like. Um, and definitely some conversations around that. And I think also kind of feeling the pressure of the deadline. And, you know, we both uh, had a lot going on in our lives. Like I think everybody in this process, you know, uh, so yeah, I don't know, Diane, if you have anything to add. 
Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, that uh, Rebecca is telling the truth. And, <laughs> and, you know, it was hard, you know, it was hard at first, you know, it was going back and forth trying to, trying to get a handle on who, uh, how we worked together. And, uh, but we were able to uh, just amalgamate, you know, both of our uh, ideas somehow like for instance I you know I had an idea first of of like uh, putting uh, uh, everything in uh, kind of a uh, what do you call it just a uh, in in a formula in a formula kind of thing and Rebecca said well 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 why don't we just let it let it go you know and so we were back and forth about that but uh, so it, it turned out to be both and, you know, and that was pretty cool. You know, it just, it just sort of, you know, got that way, you know, and uh, yeah. It just... <laughs> it's great. So beautiful. Um, yeah. So maybe Ria and Barbara, you had further thoughts for resistance. In... <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I think for me, the number one way I was pushed out of my box, as I mentioned, was um, using my voice in, in ways that I'm unaccustomed to doing. Um, and I think it was really actually very beautiful to see so many of us explore secondary instruments or um, modes of creation we're not as familiar with. And I think so much of what I've loved about M3 is that space to be very vulnerable and offer something that isn't perfect or isn't polished, um, but still brings so much, you know, just raw energy and, and love. So, yeah. Barbara, did you want to add anything? I absolutely agree mm. with Ria. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, yeah, how we all felt like free of uh, trying other things. Um, yeah, you know, I think we all had the same issue, like, okay, uh, working on a, a in distance, so uh, we couldn't get together and play together in a room. Uh, so uh, maybe we all, uh, yeah, deal with this. How is this going to, how are we going to uh, do this and, and, you know, record and uh, receive the recording, listen to it. Uh, but once it just started, it was enthusiasm all the time. Like, yeah, this is so cool. Yeah, you know, and here and this and that. And uh, so the only thing is that I wanted Ria's voice much louder. And Ria was, no, 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 it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Don't raise the volume. It's okay. And I was like, please. <laughs> So amazing your voice is so amazing <laughs> you know and just, no 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 uh but yeah and that is that is that is how it is to work uh together absolutely and at the same time while i was listening to it and you know and was what was, was perfect where it was so yeah um very very wow, interesting that's... process absolutely Wow, that's beautiful to hear. I didn't know that, that you both wanted to, at different levels. <laughs> um, so I know Shanta earlier had asked, um, and shout out to Shanta from our second cohort in Chicago. She asked uh, where Lyle and Milena were located when your piece was playing. Now, Milena, you're in Boston and New York. You're kind of going between both or you're mainly in New York now? Yeah, exactly. So I'm between Boston and New York. Okay, um, and Lyle was from in New York. Yeah, and yes. Lyle, yeah. I think uh, when we did it, she was in Washington, D.C. Oh, yeah. I see. Yeah, we were both traveling around during that time. <laughs> mm, got it. So you still haven't met in person? No, we haven't. Okay, okay. Soon. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to meet all of Great. you. Great. Yes. Um, and another question, um, yes, Arlene and Larry Dunn uh, had asked for the credits to be listed uh, for each piece since they went by so fast. So we will definitely list that on our website. Thank you for that suggestion. Um, and another question for all the duos, 
um, again from Christopher. Um, these are all such rich, incredible works. I would like to hear from any or all of the artists what this cohort experience and compositional experience meant to them and how they think the experience will carry forward in their careers and lives. That's a very big question. So <laughs> um, would Milena and Leia, um, you know, for your duo, would you like to answer Milena first? Yeah, for sure. Um, well, let me read the, the, the question again. <laughs> yeah, it, it's in the Q and A. It's quite, it's quite a big, yeah. it's like a big question. But um, just how your experience in in this cohort and your compositional experience in creating the piece, uh, what it meant to you, and how how you think it'll just carry forward, kind of what mm -hmm. you took out of how how it'll carry forward through in your career and your life. Right. So what, one of the things I really, really loved, not just about the, the fact of creating this, uh, these works, but just the, the empire of M3, it's just the feeling of, of home, of family, you know, a place where we can be vulnerable, just share everything uh, and receive everything from everybody else. So it was just a really deep and beautiful experience for me and I think for, for all of us, just getting to, to share, getting to know each other, even we haven't met in person, but just uh, sharing our personal stories, you know, where we come from, why do we do music, what music means for us, or the things that we want to change through music as well. So I feel just this whole experience just has been so uh, powerful and empowering for me and I'm definitely going to try to to keep carrying this, uh, how, how will I say, this emotion or this kind of movement, you know, just trying to, to make everything better and change things that I, I feel need to be changed. So, you know, this whole experience was just amazing and getting to create with Layal and with all of you was just really powerful. So thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Um, yeah, Diane and Rebecca. Well, yeah, Big I. Question. <laughs> yeah, it's a huge. It's huge. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that uh, you know the, the the most important thing was that uh, just during you know during the height of COVID, you know, just going through this, it was it was so uh, comforting and uh, you know to to really feel that family uh feeling and uh and to be able to uh dig deeply uh and 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 continue like you know, when melinda said movement you know it's like to just sort of continue the movement where you know in in, in other <laughs> situations there, there there was no movement you know and there was there was no uh impetus really you know, um, so I, it was, I was, I am entirely grateful for the cohort for, for that reason and many, many, many more, you know, um, yeah. yeah, I agree with that entirely. And I think it was really twofold for me. One was the, the richness of the relationships that was formed. And I think that will go well beyond, you know, this, our cohort sort of moving on and, already talking like let's make the reunion <laughs> um but i think also just as as women identifying and female identifying and trans and non-binary artists like we've all experienced a lot of um setbacks and pushbacks and obstacles in our careers and it was really amazing to have a space that was safe and also um with artists at many different stages of our careers to really share. And for me, that was super inspiring and uh, really exciting. And that's one of the, the parts of this program. I think that's so incredible is that support and that mutual mentorship. I, I felt super deeply and I'm really grateful for. Um, and just compositionally speaking, it just gave me a lot of confidence to say, yeah, I, I use my voice, which is something I don't normally do. Um, and although I've been improvising for like a lot of years, I haven't 
uh, identified as a composer until very recently. Um, so I think this allowed me to sort of tap into that and gain confidence and sort of freedom when imagining the future for me in, in that role. Mm. Amazing. Yeah, Barbara and Ria. How you yeah, carry this say, into I the future. I agree with you all. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I agree absolutely with you. Um, absolutely. I, 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 I agree what, what Diana said. Uh, we were all in the middle of the pandemics and nothing was going on or very little was going on here in Argentina. Nobody was playing at the time. So it was kind of a blessing. Like, oh, thank God, you know. This is so nice. What is happening? It's like, some, <laughs> you know, <laughs> feeling like, oh, yeah, enjoying it so much. Uh, and at the same time, being very surprised. I never thought, like, uh, I, I never imagined what was what went on, uh, what was going to go on. I absolutely agree with Milena, with this family uh gathering and the fact of opening and uh so much uh and that is also thanks to you jen and sarah that you invited us to uh, do that yeah and you invited us to open up and talk about feelings and wow and i remember meetings they were like whoa you know <gasps> so deep so wonderful and oh you know uh really thank you so very much and so many things because at the same time then composing in a different way uh again and m meeting different people composing with someone that you don't know that you have never played with before oh, lovely i want to do that more um <laughs> and um uh yeah, I mean, I've, I've met 14 new wonderful people here. Wow. You know, yeah. we're going to make that reunion, Rebecca, right? Yes, we're going to we, make will. <laughs> we will. We will. Absolutely. Absolutely. We are working on it. <laughs> um, and Ria, did you want to also yeah, talk about So much of what I was thinking has, has been said in such articulate and eloquent ways. Um, but the only thing I would add is as someone who's like very young, like 21 years old, just getting out of conservatory, oh. um, it, it was just so special to be, <laughs> um, in, in the companionship of, of people with so much love and wisdom to give and also feel that I had something to offer as well. Um, and the you know intergenerational aspect of it is so was so unexpectedly moving. Um, there were so many sessions where like we were crying, <laughs> we were like on Zoom crying, um, and just the you know reiterating the community and, and the family that that M three has has given to us all. And I'm so excited that this is just the beginning of of our journey together. Yes, it, it is um, just the beginning. Um, and Sumi Tanoka, who was my cohort partner, first cohort, <laughs> um, she asked, um, and I believe this is to Barbara and Ria, but I'd love to hear from all the duos, um, how, how you collaborated on the video together, um, if that hasn't been answered. So I think the first, I think it was addressed to Barbara and Ria first. So yeah, did, did Mariana have a lot of that footage or did you contribute yeah, a lot of um, the footage? Well, first off, we were so like out of our element in the in creating the video. We were like, what are we doing? I have no idea. <laughs> um, but Barbara sent a really phenomenal reference video uh, from which we kind of got the inspiration of like things moving at different sizes and speeds and shapes in an overwhelming chaotic sense which i think was a lot of a lot of what we drew from um in terms of footage we we did take some of it and barbara and i would like send each other photos from our walks and explorations and be like let's let's stick this in there why not <laughs> um but definitely a lot of the artistic vision um came came from mariana i mean she's just incredible absolutely incredible i sent her like a a little graphic of what each 
section of the video should look like in the most like basic illustrations and she took it and ran with it and made something very magical wow so the bubbles and the were those from so mariana or from your idea into we, we had the idea <laughs> to have like each word be like a drop of water on a canvas or something of that sort um All right and i didn't know how that was going to be manifested but it was we also had a lot of like we were like can we have illustrations moving lines like the idea of maps converging and the lines of the maps moving off the maps and a lot of like big big ideas um but mariana made made it happen somehow oh, wow yeah, yeah. We, gave her, we gave her a lot of pictures and a lot of uh i had these uh super eight family uh movies film uh, so when she used that as well, she absolutely interpreted, understood us. She did it so, you know, she got it just like that. So that's it. With just a whole bunch of, of pictures and things and colors and, you know, yeah, and videos and <laughs> things. Amazing. Um, yeah. Well, thank you. Um, it was it was incredible, uh, <laughs> and I just want to thank um, people who made this uh, possible, our supporters. Um, and you know, if you love what you heard, uh, you can always give a tax deductible donation um, at the link that I dropped. Um, and also, there are many ways to support us um, aside from donations. You know, we always appreciate pro bono tech and shout out to Abel and Yardbird um, from National uh, Jazz Museum in Harlem's tech team who made this happen. Um, and we also um, rehearsal, performance space, touring, booking, publicity, networking, you know, all of that is so uh, important and can support us. Um, and, uh, you know, women and non-binary artists focus entrepreneurship and career development. Um, yes, all of that support is amazing. Um, we do want to thank our host, Kyla Marshall. Woo! And big thanks to Maureen Knighton and Doris Duke Charitable Foundation, Vanessa Reed and New Music USA, and Arlene and Larry Dunn, all of whom supported this cohort, our Summer Solstice 2021 cohort. Um, and thank you again to Christopher Pelham and Center for Men and and Sharing, and Nancy and Joe Walker and Media The Foundation, Sarah Donnelly, South Arts and Jazz Road Creative Residencies, and our fiscal sponsor, New York Foundation for the Arts. And speaking of our videographer, Mariana Meraz, um, big thanks to her and also our audio engineer, Andrea Ambro, for doing the sound for all the, the pieces. Um, and also to Emily Bookwalter, Michael Desson, and thank you, big thank yous to editor in chiefs and development editors, Jordana Elizabeth and Naomi Extra. And we have our big announcement for our anthology uh, happening now and I'm going to uh, drop that link um, in the chat right here so that is uh, we're releasing it at this festival so this cohort we are there everyone's working on their essays right now <laughs> to be published in the next edition so um, super exciting and um, we want to also thank Dan Shea and Shea Stokes Inline Speed for their donation. Um, also NYC Winter Jazz Fest, Tracy Hydra Suffern, Ryan Maloney, and the National Jazz Museum in Harlem um, for hosting us. And to everyone who supported us so far. So tomorrow, same time, uh, 2 p.m. Eastern time, you definitely want to come back and hear Sonny Jun paired with Eli Maliwan. Um, and Rani Jambak paired with Sheila Maurice Gray and Francesca Tinksley with Tandy and Tuli. Um, so they will be premiering their pieces tomorrow. And yes, thank you. And one more applause for everyone. Unmute. <laughs> and um, spread the news. And uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Yay. Bye, everyone.
feel free to close it down. 